Today I'll be showing off an ultra high heat propane broiler that will change the way that you cook your steaks. I personally eat around three pounds of beef a day, so cooking good delicious steaks is near and dear to my heart. By the end of this video, you will have seen the setup of this grill, its capacities, and several methods I use to cook my steaks. The assembly is very straightforward. The grill comes packaged well and the stainless steel components fit together without the need of tools or hardware. You will get a set of instructions which you should read in full, however just watching these clips here will likely be enough for you to assemble your grill. The propane hose and regulator come pre-assembled so all you need to do is connect it to your propane tank. The striker assembly in the rear of the grill will require a AAA battery to function. I like this location since it makes changing this battery easy in the future. I test fired the grill in my shop just to make sure I had it all working and then brought it outside for the real testing. Now I'm going to be outlining two of my favorite methods for cooking steaks on this grill. However, I wanted to point out that I've also cooked burgers and tri-tips on this grill as well. While I did a great job with these, I found it pretty messy to cook burgers. The tri-tip searing works just fine, but you'll have to play with the height settings so that you don't char them too badly. Alrighty, let's cook some steaks. The decision to use either of these two steak cooking methods on this grill really comes down to where I'm getting the steaks from. If I'm ordering steaks from the Beef Initiative, they'll come to me vacuum sealed and I'll use the first method, whereas if I'm buying them from HEB, I'll use method number two. With these premium Beef Initiative steaks in the vacuum sealed bags, I start off by popping them in the sous vide at 128 degrees Fahrenheit. Generally, I'm putting them in a water bath straight from the freezer, so I'll do this around 1 p.m. to be ready by dinner. Before pulling them out, I'll go over to the broiler and get it cranked up. This brings me to my first pro tip on this grill, and it's related to the startup procedure. At first, I was having trouble starting this broiler and having it stay lit, but what it came down to was user error. The trick is you need to hold down the striker for around 5 to 6 seconds after you hear that the flame has been lit. Once I began doing this, I haven't had any problems starting up the broiler. It takes around 5 minutes to get to full heat, so while it's doing that, I cut the steaks out of the packs and dried them off. I generally throw some kosher salt onto them at this point, but make sure to leave the pepper off since the grill is hot enough to burn it. Depending on the thickness of the steaks, I'll generally operate on the second or third slot in proximity to the burner. The amount of searing time per side is generally 55 seconds to 1 minute and 30 seconds depending on the slot you're using and the cut of beef you're cooking. I'll generally do and advise doing multiple visual checks during the cook since this broiler can get away from you quickly and overchar your steaks if you're not careful. Once you achieve your desired sear, take them off, let them rest for a few minutes, and dig in. The second method I use on steaks is reserved for steaks I buy in normal packs from HEB. I start off the day before by placing the steaks in a pan with a grate, salting them with some kosher salt, and putting them in the fridge. I found that a 12 to 24 hour salt brining technique like this one will tenderize the steak and make the steak taste better overall. After I take them out of the fridge, I pat them down to make sure that they're dry, and then it's off to the grill. The next pro tip has to do with cleanup. I've been laying down a large piece of foil on both the main drip tray and the table protective ledge. This allows me to just pull out the foil with the drippings and throw it away after the cook. Normally I install the foil before starting up the grill. Like the previous example, I generally have them on the second to third slot on the broiler and I'll keep them in there for between 55 and 90 seconds with multiple visual checks. With a good sear on the steaks, I'll insert this meter probe into one of the thickest ones and put the whole tray into the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit with a target of 135 degrees internal temperature. This normally has me pulling the steaks at around 130 degrees and letting them rest till they hit 135. So the final verdict is that I love this broiler for searing my steaks. Overall, it's cleaner and faster than using the pan or the hand torch, and I believe it gives equivalent or better results. I purchased a fairly cheap stainless steel table to hold the grill, as well as a cover to keep it clean and mostly dry. If you got something out of this video and you're considering buying any of these items and you want to help the channel, please use my affiliate links in the description below. It costs you nothing to do so and it gives the channel a finder's fee when you use them. As always, like and subscribe and this is Redbeard Engineered, signing off.